Welcome back guys. It is thrift flip slash acrylic pour slash let's just put all this together and make some furniture time. We're going to make some dope sh All right guys, I thrifted both of these tables for $10. So $5 each, not much to look at. Probably would have ended up in the trash unless my little eyes wouldn't have wound up on them. Um, the tops of them, horrible, super wobbly, just not doing great. However, I see stuff like this and I just see magic. I'm like, oh my gosh, and I get real excited and then I buy trash. Here's why. I can take these tables and turn them into something wonderful. Each one of these legs alone costs around $5. That's like the minimum each. So even though the tabletops are messy, even though they're really wobbly, even though they look like they do, there's a value of at least $15 in these tables just on the legs alone. I see that. I know that. I'm going to do something about it. So to start with these tables, the first thing that I'm going to need to do is paint these legs up. So I took some um, sandpaper and I lightly sanded all around them just to get any of the grime and yuckies off of them. And, um, you know, they are older, so just kind of smooth them down to make sure they're good to go. I'm going to use some of my Apple Barrel black paint to paint them up and then I'm going to seal them with, seal them with some poly acrylic. Now I'm doing this while they're still... Um, on these tables. They just unscrew out of there. I figured it'd be easier just to do them while they're attached to that table so that I don't have to chase them around so they're not rolling around everywhere. And then once those are good and dry, I'm going to unscrew them from their base and then I'm going to hit the hardware with some spray paint because I want to make them look a little newer and clean them up a bit. Um, and again, it's going to be easiest for me while they're still attached so that I can hit them real quick, and then move on. Now, here's the fun part. In my head, I thought, okay, I love when I do the um, Starburst like blowouts. You know, I pour the ring and then use the hair dryer to blow them out. Um, if you're not familiar with that, uh, I have several videos on my channel of me doing so that are really cool. I can drop them in the description. If you love this technique and you're interested on how to do it, I have a how-to video showing you how I mix my paints, the consistency to look for, and kind of just little tips and tricks on how to be successful with it. I will also link that in the description. Now I will say when I made that, I did not realize that um, the white apple barrel paint was causing cracking. Um, I've somehow managed to make it work um, and not really had any issues, but a lot of other people have. So all of the Apple Barrel paints work just fine for this. Um, you can find them at Walmart. They're nice and cheap. However, use a different brand of white. Pretty much any other brand should be fine. Um, this brand is just really thick, so it tends to um, not mix up very well and crack. Unless you're like me and you've figured out somehow how to... <laughs> Um, kind of compensate for that. So that's the suggestion. I will link that one in the description as well if you are interested in giving this a try. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing for these tops. So I went to my local hardware store and I just picked up two um, wood rounds. The tables were originally 20 inches round. I did 18. I did that because it was either 18 or 24 and I didn't want them to get too big for the size legs that I have. So I did the 18 and um, it seemed to work out just fine. So I went ahead and prepped by painting them black, the same black that I did on the legs. It's apple barrel black. I did two coats of that and then I let that dry. Once that was dry and while that was drying, I mixed up my paints. So I used four different colors. I wanted these to look really cool, but also still be neutral. That way they could kind of go for anyone. You know, um, I thought about at one point doing just like bright rainbow, like really fun tie dye, whatever, but I toned it down a little bit. I calmed down a little bit and decided to go more neutral colors. So I did black, white, metallic gray and this like black gold shimmer color. I did not show you how I mix these paints in this video. Again, I will link down in the description a video of how I mix my paints. Know that I am by no means a professional when it comes to the fluid art. I just really enjoy doing this style and I have found what works for me on a lower budget because I, again, I don't do this all the time and I don't want to pay 
all of the big money to get rid of the really nice stuff um, when I, it's not something that I do regularly um, or take. I, I don't want to say I don't take it seriously, but I feel like you get what I'm saying. So um, that'll be linked in the description. But here are my four colors and I am just going to pour them out and blow them out. So I don't want the tables with fluid art. You can't obviously replicate the same exact thing. But to kind of give them their own personalities, I'm going to be using the same four colors, but like dumping them differently. So for the first one, I did black in the middle, followed by the gold, and then I went from there and got those all poured out and blown out. And I'm going to let you guys just enjoy that because it is so magical and so much fun to watch. And then I'll talk to you about the second table. For the second one, same exact thing. I did the four colors and then I started with white in the middle with silver around it. And then I blew it out. Now I will say that the metallic paints um, tend to make like the little cells or like little eyelets that you see. So basically the chemical reaction, it kind of opens up a circle and any of the colors underneath show up. And it's really cool, um, it's just enough. And I did torch all of the bubbles out before and after um, to make sure that there's no air bubbles and it also kind of helps create a faux cell situation going on. So I'm going to let you enjoy the second table. I love these pieces.
How relaxing is that? I could watch that all day. Actually, I do. I watch people, other people do this all the time. Um, I love doing it. I think that turned out really cool. They turned out exactly how I pictured in my head, which I'm so excited about. So I'm going to give these three days to dry. I want to make sure that they have absolutely plenty of time to dry without any disturbance um, or anything getting in the way or messing them up. Um, there is a risk of them drying not quite how they look or how I want them to look. So we just cross our fingers and I will go ahead and show you guys kind of the wet look that goes on because it's really cool. Now to seal these in, I want to make sure that these aren't getting bumped and scratched up or anything. There's no way to mimic the paint that's on there. So if it gets bumped or scratched, it's not like you can just like fill it in with some paint, you're going to notice. So I took my poly acrylic and I did two um, thicker coats. So I did one coat, I let it dry completely. And then I did a second coat because I just want to make sure it's really, really good and protected. So I did two coats on the top and then I did one coat on the bottom of it. Um, I did go back over it with some black just to make sure that there are no spots and then I covered up any of the paint that kind of like held on to the bottom of it. Um, I taped one of them and did not tape the other just to kind of see and actually the taped one held on to more paint than the non-paint one or than the non-taped one. Um, what was happening is the tape was basically giving it a reason to kind of come underneath the wood when on the other one it just kind of fell off the side. So just FYI, um, with this certain round it has like a beveled edge and it worked better to not tape the bottom. It made less of a mess. So um, I did also take a, a popsicle stick and take it around the bottom edge of it to get all the little drips and stuff so that when it dried it didn't dry with drips on the bottom it was nice and flat so i did that um a couple times just as it was drying came back in and made sure all of them um, were cleaned up and then at some point it kind of stops doing that so just fyi if you want to save yourself some trouble from having like a bunch of drips showing um that's what i did for that I just took a popsicle stick um, I also take a popsicle stick and any of the edge where the paint did not flow over and cover properly, I take it, I pick up the stuff that was on the table and I just tap it in that bare spot and it kind of, if it doesn't pull the other paint down a little farther and completely cover it, it just kind of covers that bare spot and because it's so busy, no one really notices it. So that's what I did to clear, you know, clean up my edges and stuff. I feel like that's kind of important. So yes. After I have sealed it with polyacrylic and it is good to go, I went and got some of the Rust-Oleum 2X um, Prime and Cover Clear Gloss. I want to put a lot of gloss on these because I want those metallic paints and sparkles to kind of shimmer and shine when light hits it. So I think I did four coats, um, light coats, but four coats of the gloss on top of these tables. It's just going to keep adding those layers of protection and again it's going to make them nice and shimmery and shiny so that when light hits the table you can see those colors kind of dancing underneath. I love them. Love them. <laughs> so I need to be very careful when I am assembling them to make sure that I don't scratch anything. So while I'm working on the back side of the table, anytime um, after that has been done, I just put a towel or a piece of fabric or something underneath that way the, the face of the table is not getting scratched up if I accidentally bump it or move it. Um, so then it was time to assemble the legs and add them on. Now I will tell you working with the circular table and only three legs, I am not any type of math genius. I don't really like math to begin with, let alone geometry. We did not get along. Like we were not friends in school and we don't talk. Like she can't sit with me, you know what I mean? So I was able to call my boyfriend in to kind of help him. I can understand the concept of what needs to happen. I just can't put the math in with it because then my brain goes mush. But uh, basically what worked out for us was uh, we measured and found the middle point of the circle and then um, drew, like measured from the edge of how far we wanted the um, hardware to sit and then made a circle, like kept a point in the middle, made a, a circle all the way around to kind of give me a visual of where the circle is supposed to be and where the hardware needs to go. From there kind of placed it out um, in the way that it needs and then he was able to take the tape measure at that point and kind of make sure things evened out and it, it all just kind of worked <laughs> worked out and came together and then he screwed them in for me. 
I know how to use a screw gun and power tools, but like if someone is there to help me do it, then I'm just going to let them do it. He's better at it than me anyway. So he very thankfully to him, he came out there and he helped me put all of the little hardware on. We screwed in the legs and flipped them over. And that is that super, I wouldn't say super easy flip because there's a lot of steps when it comes to like doing the paint course and everything, but five dollars guys I paid five dollars per table okay <laughs> I'm pretty sure the wood rounds were ten dollars each so oh you know all in all for actual um like hardware and wood of this table I paid fifteen dollars per table and obviously I'm going to sell them for much more than that but they turned out fantastic I love them I love that I decided to give them two different personalities um kind of just showcase each one that has its own little um situations going on just I I love them please please let me know what you think about these um if you don't like them to each their own I love them and you can't bring me down <laughs> so give me a thumbs up if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you like these items if you think I did a good job with them if you're new here consider subscribing we go on our little crafting journey every week and you never really know what I'm going to come up with so I would love for you to join me if you try any of my, you know, anything that's inspired by one of my projects or you just have your own projects going on or you just want to interact and chit chat. I do have a Facebook group specific for um, sharing projects and ideas and bouncing, you know, some chit chat and chatter over different projects that you have going on. It is going to be linked down in the description and I would love for you to join us. If you're returning, you know I love you. Thank you so much for coming back to see me. I really, really appreciate it. I am going to stop blabbing and take you guys in for a closer look. I'll see you next time.